So, let's study the world of insects. Did you know that the study of insects is called entomology? Let's dive in into entomology. Look at these insects. Can you name them? You will see them in your garden. What makes these insects as insects? Why do we not call them by any other name? Well, they all have six characteristics in common. Firstly, they have three pairs of jointed legs or six legs. They have soft bodies. They crawl or fly. They lay eggs. Their body is divided in three segments, the head, thorax and abdomen. And they have an antenna on their heads. So what are the six characteristics of insects? Three pairs of jointed legs, soft bodies with no internal bones. They crawl or fly. They lay eggs. They have three body segments, the head, thorax and abdomen and usually have an antenna on their head. So, look at this beautiful red spider. Is this an insect? No, a spider is not an insect. Spiders have two body segments instead of three and they have eight walking legs while insects have six walking legs. So the spider is not an insect. The other thing you need to know is the soft body of insects is covered by a hard outer covering called the exoskeleton just like this beautiful red bug that you see. The parts of an insect's body includes the head, antenna, legs, thorax, wings and abdomen. Let's look at it further. The head contains eyes, mouth and a pair of antenna. Most insects can have a tube-like mouth to suck food such as mosquitoes and butterflies or they can have strong mouths to cut and chew food like cockroaches and grasshoppers. Their antenna are also called feelers because they help the insects feel the world around them. Then comes the thorax, which is the middle part of the insect's body. It contains the wings and legs. Below the thorax, insects have a segmented abdomen. It contains the heart and digestive organs. And importantly, it also contains air holes or spiracles, which allow the insects to breathe. Now. Let's look at the life cycle of a butterfly. Butterflies are vibrant insects with six legs, antenna, a head, thorax and an abdomen. They undergo a four-stage life cycle. Let's look at this a little further. The four-stage life cycle of the butterfly includes the egg, a caterpillar stage, chrysalis and the grown-up adult stage. In the egg stage, the female butterfly lays her eggs on the underside of the leaf. She may lay anywhere between 200 to 500 eggs. The eggs are attached to the leaf with a sticky substance so that the eggs don't fall on the ground. From the egg emerges this beautiful caterpillar this stage is also known as the larva or the caterpillar stage. At this stage, the caterpillar is very hungry and eats as much as it can. In the process, it sheds a lot of skin and grows new layers of skin. After it has eaten enough, the caterpillar enters the pupa stage. It stops eating and forms a protective casing. This is known as the chrysalis. Inside the chrysalis, the caterpillar continues to grow. 
The pupa stage lasts between 8 to 15 days. From the pupa emerges a beautiful butterfly. The butterfly is fully formed with legs and wings, indicating that it has entered the adult stage. So, the four step life cycle of a butterfly includes the egg stage, caterpillar, pupa, and the adult stage. Other insects may also have a four step life cycle. These include silkworms, honeybees, ants, and moths. Some insects, like the cockroach, however, have a three step life cycle, which is the egg stage, nymph stage, and the adult stage. As you see, the nymph is smaller in size and the adult cockroach has developed wings. Where do these insects live? How do they live? Have you ever wondered? Let's find out. Insects live in organized colonies where each member performs specific tasks. For instance, ants have a queen ant, worker ant, and soldier ant. The role of ants in an ant colony. The queen ant plays a crucial role in the structure and hierarchy of the ant colony. She is the largest member of the colony and holds a position of power and authority. Her responsibility as the queen is reproduction. Then you have drone ants whose main role is to fertilize the queen's eggs. Worker ants clean the nest, collect food, and take care of the eggs, the younger ants, and the queen. So, like the ants, the bees also have a hierarchy. You have the queen bee, the worker bee, and the drone bees. Insects are all around us. But are they of any use to humans? Well, the answer is an absolute yes. Let's study how these insects help us, taking the example of the honeybee. Honeybees help in pollination. They transfer pollen between male and female parts of flowers, allowing plants to grow seeds and fruit. They give us honey. These workers produce two to three times more honey than they need, which is consumed by humans. They also give us beeswax, which is used to polish wood and leather for making candles and is an ingredient in many cosmetics. So, the bees give us, they help us in pollination, they give us honey and they give us beeswax. Like the bees, there are other insects which may be important for humans. But bees are most often bred for honey in a place called the apiary. An apiary or a bee yard is a place where bees are kept for honey. Even cockroaches help us to clear up the environment by eating dead insects and animals. Ladybirds eat the little insects which harm our garden plants. Butterflies are also important pollinators. Ground beetles also eat garden pests. And they help to control weed population and contribute to overall garden health. So you see, these little hard-working insects play an important role in our life. Did you know that dragonflies have inspired the design of drones? Yes, the 300 million year old flying techniques of dragonflies are being used to design the drones of the future. Isn't that so interesting? Apart from this, we learn so many things from insects. They are hard working. They are well organized. They are extremely patient. They adapt to the environment they are in. They communicate 
so well with each other and they are superb at demonstrating teamwork but in sex can harm us as well yes they can be the cause and sp- and spread of a lot of diseases house flies mosquitoes lice locusts termites bed bugs and many species of ants can prove to be super deadly for humans but perhaps the title of the deadliest insect in the world goes to mosquitoes because they spread malaria and dengue on a very large scale so let's quickly recap what we have learned about the world of insects the study of insects is called entomology the six characteristics of insects are three part body antenna three pairs of jointed legs no bones the insects lay eggs crawl and fly their soft body is covered by a hard outer covering called the exoskeleton the head of the insect and the thorax and abdomen are the key parts of an insect's body antenna are also called feelers insects can have a tube like mouth or strong mouths the middle part of the thorax contains legs and wings insects have a segmented abdomen insects have air holes or spiracles on the abdomen for breathing insects have a four stage or a three stage life cycle they live in organized colonies or nests some insects may be harmful but also provide us products like honey and beeswax an apiary or a bee yard is a place in which colonies of bees are kept for honey production bees and butterflies help in the pollination of plants we learn many qualities from insects like being organized patient strong and responsible are you ready to take a quiz on what you have learned my little scientists the time is now let's take a quick quiz Here we go. The study of insects is called DASH. The study of insects is called entomology. Next question. The soft body of insects is covered by a hard outer covering called the It's called the exoskeleton. The soft body of insects is covered by a hard outer covering called the exoskeleton. Antenna of insects are also called they are called feelers because they help the insects feel the environment around them. Next question. The part of an insect's body that contains legs and wings is the Remember the middle portion what is it called it's called the thorax yes the thorax contains the legs and the wings and is the middle part of the body insects have air holes on the abdomen and thorax for breathing these are called spiracles the air holes on the abdomen and thorax of the insect's body which are used for breathing are spiracles you're halfway through the quiz question number 6 at the stage in which the caterpillar sheds a lot of skin and grows new layers is called caterpillar or the larva stage In the pupa stage the caterpillar stops eating and forms a protective casing known as the
chrysalis. In the pupa stage, the caterpillar stops eating and forms a protective casing known as the chrysalis. Three more questions to go. Bees and butterflies help in reproduction of plants through a process known as pollination. Bees and butterflies help in reproduction through a process known as pollination. Two products produced by bees that human use are The answer is honey and beeswax, both of which are produced by bees. And the last question, a place in which colonies of bees are kept for the purpose of honey production is called apiary. Yes, humans keep bees for the purpose of honey production in a place called the apiary. Yay! Congratulations! You are now through with your study of entomology, the study of the science of insects. Congratulations! Happy learning kids! Till we meet again. <laughs>